calling all pre-medical students. Do you know the application process to get into medical school? This video might judge your decision of wanting to be a doctor. Let's go. Now before I get into this video, I want to let you know that a couple of days ago, I did not know any of this information, which is crazy because now I'm in my third year of an undergraduate degree with a pre-med concentration. All this information could really judge my decision of if I wanted to be a doctor or not, which you already know is a long path. Thankfully, my good friend Ryan was able to explain to me the whole process of the application and I'm able to give you guys value. So Ryan, if you're watching, thanks for influencing this video. First, I want to let down the general layout of the application process. The first thing you have to take is the MCAT and then you have your primary application then your secondary application then an interview and then you're finally done I'm sure you already know that you need to take the MCAT to get into medical school well I'm here to tell you that that is just 1% of the application process to even get in do you even know how to register for the MCAT well you need to go to a site known as AMCAS which stands for American Medical College Application Services I hope I did not mess that up yes the MCAT is a paid test. You need to pay in order to even take it. Through that site, it costs around $330 to sign up for the MCAT. Once you take the MCAT and you feel confident about it, you need to start looking towards the application process. But before you do that, make sure you get your transcript from the university a month before you even apply to medical school. Grab your transcript from the university and send it to that site, the AMCAS site. Yes, even that costs money to even get your transcript, but I think it's around 10 bucks, so you're good. After you send it to the AMCAS, then you need to choose which medical school that you want to send your transcript to. And this whole process takes a long time, which is important why you do it a month in advance before you apply. I cannot stress this enough. Okay, now that you're ready to apply, let's focus on the primary application. This is the first application that you must submit. Yes, I said first, there is more than one. So the primary application includes personal statement, experience section, and your MCAT serial number. When you sign up for the MCAT, you will receive a serial number. It's important to keep the serial number. Now, I must include that you do not even need your MCAT score in order to sign up for the primary application. You can simply just put the serial number and send in your MCAT score when you receive it. Also, lastly, depending on what school you send the application to, they might ask you questions regarding their school specifically. The reason being is because they want to know why you want to apply to their school. For example, if I wanted to apply to Michigan State Medical School, maybe they would ask me, why Michigan State? Why do you want to choose our school? They need to know these things. Now, it's important when you answer these questions that you're as honest and thorough as possible. So let's talk about the personal statement. In the personal statement, basically, you have to answer the questions of why you want to be a doctor. But there's a catch. You can only submit 5,300 characters. Characters are letters, not words. This can be quite challenging because you're trying to fit a why you want to be a doctor in 5,300 characters. It might sound like a lot, but it's not. Now, they do not want generic answers such as, I want to help people, I want to take care of others, I care for others. While these are all good reasons, they do not want to hear these generic answers. Think about all the people that are applying to medical school. If all of them gave them the same answers, well, there's not much to distinguish from there. Before we go further, I need to include that the application process is kind of different regarding MD and DO application. What is MD and what is DO? Now, I'm not an expert on this and I'm not 100% sure. What I think from what I heard is that MD is just your basic doctor. DO can do a little bit more. Now, say you went to go see a doctor because you had back pain. Now, an MD doctor could just simply give you medication in order to counter that problem. But a DO doctor focuses more on body mechanics. So instead of giving you medications, they might give you the proper body mechanics in order to help your back get better. In order to even apply for DO schools, it's a completely different portal. You need to apply through the AACOM, which stands for American Association of College of Osteopathic Medicine. I hope I didn't butcher that too. <laughs> also, you need to look at which state you are applying to. I know some specific states have their own specific portal. For example, if you were to apply to Texas's DO or MD program, they just have one portal for that. You have to log into their specific portal. So all their numbers are kind of different. You guys can look into that yourself, but I'm going to focus more on the US in general and focusing on those two sites, specifically MD. But for DO, the characters for the personal statement is about the same. 5,300 characters to explain why you want to be a doctor. Now say something that's personal, something that actually 
sparked your life, something that changed you and changed your decision of wanting to be a doctor. Maybe you had a tragic event that changed your mind and made you want to be a doctor. Say those things. Be yourself. Be who you are. Now, after the personal statement, you have the experience section. This is important. You know before medical school that you must get experiences. Job shadowing, research, scribing, clinical work, anything like that. You need experiences. Medical school likes seeing you do a lot of things for the community, a lot of things for others, and a lot of things that is socially related. So my advice is start getting experiences as early as possible. Even if you're just a freshman in college, they like seeing that. The way it works for the MD program in the US, you can choose up to 15 experiences to include within your application. Out of those applications, you need to choose three that are the most valuable experiences. Now for each one, you need to write a statement of why they are the most valuable. In that statement, you have a list limited amount of 1,325 characters. Yes, characters, letters. Now when it's time to send in your primary application, the first school that you send it to is gonna cost $150 to send. After that, any school you choose to send your primary application to, you need to pay $50 per application. As you can see, we're already at a lot of money so far. So now you send in your primary application. It's important to note that you only really need to make one primary application and send it to all the schools. Now in about two weeks, you might get a letter from the medical school that you applied to. Now that letter could either say, we don't have enough room for you, or we want you, but we need to see further things. If you get rejected, don't worry, there's a lot of different medical schools that you can apply to. It is not the end of the world. After all, you know what you're getting yourself into. You know there's a chance of you getting rejected. Rejected. But if you get accepted, that's great. Now they need to see a secondary application, which costs about $75, around there, maybe give or take. Now it's important to know that once you send in your secondary application, you need your MCAT score results. So like I said earlier, it's important to take the MCAT in an early time. In this application, you will be asked about four to five questions. Now there's no telling what these questions will be. They could be simply of why you want to go to their school or further, why do you even want to study medicine again? Considering the secondary application is not free, you do not want to send it in knowing you do not have a good MCAT score. But once you're done with that and you think your MCAT score is good, submit it. If your MCAT score isn't good and you'd like to retake it, I would hold off on the secondary application. Now after you submit your secondary application, who knows when medical schools will get back to you, but they will eventually. But you'll either get rejected or accepted and now they want to interview you. Before you ask, yes, the interview may cost some money to even do. Some medical schools charge and some do not. So like I said, a lot of money on the line here. During the interview, just be yourself. I might upload a whole video on interviews in the near future. Considering I was a manager at a wireless company at some point in my life, I've held a lot of interviews. So I have a good idea of what is expected. Now, now after the interview, you'll either get waitlisted, rejected, or accepted. Again, if you get rejected at this time, don't be discouraged, just keep pushing yourself, roll with the punches, and apply again. If you get accepted after the interview, the application process is finally over. Depending on the score, you're gonna have to put a $700 to $1,000 down pay on that school to secure a spot there. As you can see, that's a long, long process and there's a lot at risk here. You need to be cautious when you're applying because you don't wanna spend unnecessary money that would just come back and haunt you later in life. Now, this video is never intended to scare you at all. My intentions with this video was to inform you guys of the application process because I know a couple of days ago I didn't know this and have I been not as interested in medicine as I was, maybe it could have affected my decision and I would have had a longer undergrad experience. I want to save you guys time and I want to save you guys a lot of decision making time. But that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope I was able to explain the application process as good as possible. I hope you guys got a general idea of what you need to do in order to apply for medical school and the route you have to take. Hopefully if you're already far along this way and you didn't know this information it's all new to you that it didn't make you drop out of university or anything like that with that being said if you guys like this video be sure to smack the like button hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications for the youtube algorithm but it's time to disclose this video so with that being said i'll see you guys on the flip side